few of you guys have asked uh, how I go about uh, distributing analog signals throughout my house and this is basically what I have in my equipment closet I have a couple of these analog modulators there's three of them here one of these is a channel 7 it's set to channel 7 you can set them by setting little dip switches down here in the channel select so one of these is set to channel 7 the other one's set to channel um, 9 and then there's this one here which is preset to channel 12 the blonder tongue the blonder tongue though is a stereo MTS modulator which means that the sound is stereo and I use that for music programming now you might wonder where I get the programming from well that's playing on Raspberry Pis I'll show you the little setup for that so mounted up on the wall I've got a couple of Raspberry Pis there's one of them there the other one is located here this is another modulator here this is actually a channel 5 modulator there's another Raspberry Pi there and I've got uh, programming on a memory stick this one here feeds off of this large hard drive which I have playing music I've got uh, a ton of concerts I've probably got this is a 500 gig drive and there's probably 600 or so five to six hundred concerts on here that just stream out in random and I just leave it playing and that way I can just go to any TV there's my my, my uh, ADSL modem it's a bonded modem in here this is this is my equipment closet where everything lives so this place is a disaster with wiring if we saw the wiring you'd shake your head and I don't even know where half the wiring goes but basically the signals come out of these modulators these are four of them here there's one more down here this one here is the other stereo modulator as you can see it says stereo right there lighting up in blue uh, that's a Radio Shack modulator. Now, actually, this was actually made in the USA. It's one of the few products I think the Radio Shack sold that they actually made in the States. Anyway, that's channel 4. This is a channel 3, 4 selectable. I have it on channel 4. And the other one up above here is, uh, this one's on channel 5. And then the other three that are down here, these ones are on 7, 9, and 12. So those are my, my my channels, and how the signals are combined is I just use a series of splitters like this. Nothing fancy, just a regular cable splitter. The outputs from these modulators here go into the cable splitter. Here's the signals being combined for channel 12, channel uh, 9, and channel 7. And oh, the input of the splitter at the back here, the signals are combined together. From there, the signals are then, that's not tight should tighten that up. Uh, from there the signals are combined with more signals from the other, the other uh, two feeds. And as you can see there's more cable splitters here. This is my off-air signal so uh, antenna on the roof is actually coming in through here and, and it's being mixed in. So this splitter here is actually these are the off-air signals coming from an amplifier from my antenna on the roof. These are the signals coming in from all the modulated signals. They feed into here. This mixes the air signals and the modulated signals together. From there they go into an amplifier. I have a couple of these. These are just cable amplifiers here. So the signals come in and then they get fed out from these amplifiers and then from here it goes to all the TVs in the house, to every outlet in the house. So I've got two amplifiers. The signals go into both of them and then they feed out to all the different rooms and what comes out of here is off-air signals that are modulated are off-air signals from my antenna, my digital um, HD antenna on the roof. The off-air signals come out as well as the signals that I'm generating on the modulator here. Now as far as my sources go, one of my cable boxes here as you can see I just have the AV outputs plugged into it. This particular box just feeds a standard definition feed to the channel 4 stereo modulator and this cord that you see up here this is actually the remote control um, repeater so from rooms that have got a remote sensor they can all change the channel of this box I can change it from my kitchen I can change it from my workshop kids can change it from their bedrooms this is the, the common feed so if they want to watch something, they can dial it in. They can put their TV on channel 4, and they can dial in whatever channel they wish to watch on that box. 
and I normally just leave it on a channel that I that I watch on a regular basis. That's outputting on channel 4 in stereo in standard definition. My main PVR box is in my amplifier stack. As you can see it's kind of dusty because I never get in here to clean anything because nobody ever touches this, right? And uh, this one here, it also has a remote receiver on it. This is actually controllable from my media room. So the equipment in here feeds out over HDMI to my television in my media room. It also goes through my sound system, through my Onkyo receiver that I fixed many moons ago. That's be this one here. Again, you can see it has a remote repeater here, so I can control this. The HDMI output goes in through my receiver and feeds off to my TV. The analog output from this feeds the channel 7 modulator, which also runs around the house that way. Uh, if I'm working out in the garage, for example, and my wife's watching something on TV, I can uh, watch the same thing out in the garage, and she has control over it, and she can skip the commercials and stuff, and I don't have to. I don't have to do that. But that's that's uh, that's my my main PVR there. That goes out on channel seven. Now to make sure that everything is working, I have a monitor here in the closet, which I just an analog TV, which I can then scan through, and I can make sure that everything's working. Like channel four, I've got uh, the other cable box. Uh, this is one of the Raspberry Pis that I just use for in-house uh, testing, and I just have my uh, my bad weather videos on there that just run on that. Channel seven is coming out from the uh, the PVR, which is turned on right now. Channel nine is my security cameras. Channel twelve is the uh, music player. So it looks like I got the North Sea Jazz Festival playing right now. This is in stereo. And then uh, the next one up is uh, channel 27. You actually don't see this, but this is actually an old uh, an old uh, uh, satellite box, an old um, uh, Dish Network or Bell Express View box that is no longer usable for um, satellite reception because they converted over to uh, MPEG-4. But it was one of the ones, it was the 9200, and it has an ATSC tuner. So I actually use this. I just leave it on global, and then it, it'll fire global out on channel 27 to every TV in the house. And that's a channel that I quite often watch, like for local stuff. So I always leave that running. And I actually record the news on it every day. So when I come home for lunch, I can just uh, restart the news. And it, it's just re record. It's just a, an old satellite um, Bell or Dish Network 9200. But it still works for the over-the-air I can record anything as a PVR as an over the air, and then I think right now if I clip up to 40, yeah, I've got uh, I've got my my clock, which is just uh, you know digital clock synchronized to internet time, just uh, displaying on channel 40, which I sometimes you'll see it on in in the, in the garage when I'm working. I'll just use it as a as a as a timepiece, and that's just uh, again using a uh, that's just using a, an Android uh, an Android box with a with a <laughs> A live live wallpaper and uh, a clock display. That there is the box that sends HDMI. It's a transmitter. It sends HDMI to my television in the other room over a Cat5 line. So HDMI in sends it out on Cat5, and then at the other end, the Cat5 is converted back to HDMI. So that's an HD what they call an HDMI uh, Balin or Balin. Bail um, but this is a powered one, right? And I'm actually going to do a demo video on some other HDMI. Uh, Bones that uh, they use two runs of Cat5, but they're completely passive. They don't need any power. This one needs power. And of course, we've got uh, Ethernet switches and everything in here. Everything's all hardwired in here. So this actually used to be the bracket that held up the modem, but uh, the new modem won't fit in that. So the modem has to sit on the shelf. But my modem actually used to be all strapped up in here. One of these days, I'm going to have to get in here and basically rewire this. You can see I've got all this cabling. It's all neatly going up and it goes right up into the wall and then from there it goes out everywhere else. This was kind of an afterthought. This was added after the house was built so I had to figure out a way to get all the cabling in here and I just went over top of the ceiling so it's above the ceiling and it goes from here in this room it goes into my equipment into my furnace closet which is on the other side of this hallway and then out from there it goes to the various rooms but I had to figure out a way to get all this in when I was doing it I had to figure out a way to get all this in here so all the wiring comes down and then it goes into the switch and 
hooks into all the equipment. So it's a it's it's a wiring nightmare. It resembles a, it resembles resembles some of the worst telephone rooms that I have been in in my career at the phone company, and I've been in some pretty nasty ones. But this is what they all generally look like inside. There's wires everywhere. There's you know there's there's switches and and equipment and just wires everywhere, and it's organized chaos. Every one of these goes somewhere. Uh, one of these days I'm going to have to come in here and, uh, because I've, I've changed everything so many times since I put it in that there's a lot of redundant wires that have just been disconnected and I haven't never taken them out but that'll be a project to work on sometime this summer and actually clean up the wiring in here and make it really quite presentable because at one point everything was all bundled up neat like this but then I started making changes when I start making changes things get a little bit messy but again in this area nobody has to come in here but me it's my distribution closet and I don't want anybody else coming in here nobody else in the house knows anything about what goes on in here if it doesn't work they call me for help so now out in the workshop this is my plasma set that I use when I'm watching TV uh, with this TV I, I'm on channel 5 now which is my bad weather channel and if I go to channel 7 I'll see what's coming in on the PVR the inside the closet nine will show me my security cameras 12 I use quite often because I will listen to if I'm working out here and I'm not actually recording I'll have this playing and I can usually I'll just listen to like I'll use this I'll listen to music while I'm working so channel 12 is a channel that I actually stay on quite a bit because and I might not necessarily be watching it I'm just putting it on for the uh, the music right because I have some really really uh, unique stuff this is the square right which is a, a band out of Japan that's been around for forever anyway don't want to leave that on um, channel 27 again that's coming off that off-air box and if I go back to channel 4 this is the one I can change it using that other remote control I can actually change that channel so as you can see I, I've got the other remote control and I can I can flip that channel I can flip that channel to any of the other channels. This this is changing throughout the entire uh, in, entire house. So any of the channels I can tune in here. I can I can pick them up on any TV in the house. And I normally just leave it on. Like I quite, quite often watch this channel, so I'll leave it on this channel as a regular basis, um, and uh, and leave it sit there. But as I say, it gives me quite a bit of flexibility, and it also gives me those analog channels so that when I'm testing equipment. When I'm testing a VCR, for example, or an analog TV, I've got my own in-house analog signals for testing. Uh, this one I leave up quite a bit because usually this is what I'm going to show you if I'm if I'm showing anything on YouTube. It will generally be from channel five, which is my in-house, or, or channel nine, which is my security cameras. But it'll generally be uh, this channel. That's the main reason that this one is running is uh, quite often I'll, I'll be using this uh, channel for demonstration just so that I don't uh, have to worry about uh, getting any copyright uh, strikes. And I was thinking of firing up another modulator because I do have I do have a couple more. I was thinking of firing up another one and just putting color bars on it just for uh, just for a test pattern so I can actually throw color bars onto a channel as I I do have that old um, DXC1800 uh, color camera that has the NTSC bar generator. So I was thinking, what the heck? I can just hook that thing up and uh, put it on another modulator and inject another channel, and it's pretty easy to do and uh, make use of some of this old obsolete equipment. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this kind of look at my distribution system. I know it's kind of complex. It seems really complicated when you try to describe it, but in reality, it's actually very, very simple. Just take the output from agile modulators and have them on non-adjacent channels. So you wouldn't put one on channel two, another one on channel three, another one on channel four. Um, you could do it with these, with these commercial grade modulators. Yes, you can do it because they all have soft filters on them so they don't interfere with each other. Consumer grade ones, uh, no, uh, you got to keep them at least two channels apart. And when I'm talking consumer grade, I'll show you what a consumer grade modulator looks like. So this one's a consumer grade, a Holland HMM10 micro modulator. This is a UHF modulator. And as you can see, you can change it to any channel in the UHF range. It'll go, I think, it'll, I think it actually goes up to channel 83. So if you've got an old TV that went up to channel 83, this actually can make use of those channels that were, that are in the, the old cellular band. So uh, if you've got a really old TV, 
this is kind of useful because you can utilize anywhere from channel 14 all the way up to channel 83. That's in UHF mode. When you put it into cable mode, which is this button over here, I think that's it there, uh, mode, cable, standard, HRC, and IRC, so it'll do all three types. If I put it in standard cable, okay, it will go up to uh, channel 135, I believe. 130, oh, 140, there. So it starts out at channel 65. These are the CATV channels. So you have 65, 66, 67, etc. It goes up to, I believe it's 94, and then it skips the channels that were in the FM band because channel 95, 95 to 99, actually were located in the FM radio band. So any cable channels, any cable operators that offered uh, channels in the 95 to 99 range, they could not offer FM cable service because they were using that spectrum of 88 to 108 megahertz for TV, to put TV channels. So this does not obviously cover that because uh, the last thing they want is somebody putting this on an FM channel and hooking up an antenna to it and causing interference. And yes, if you, if you hooked up an antenna to the RF output here and plugged it into an amplifier, for example, yes, you could essentially make yourself a, uh, a television transmitter. And many people, including myself, have done that. If you want to uh, transmit wirelessly to a TV without running a uh, cable, you can put a small antenna on this thing, and it won't go very far. It might make it around your house, right? Uh, if you put an amplifier on it, you could certainly go further. That uh, Blonder Tongue uh, Channel 12 modulator that I've got in the closet, that has, I think it's a plus 60 dB output. It's really high because it actually was used by a cable company that injects into the cable. So it has a, it, it's a really high output, and if you hook an antenna up to that thing, and I've tried this, you can pick it up for a couple hundred feet. A, a clear signal. I can put an antenna on that thing and walk around with my portable TV and pick up a signal you know, all the way around the property. It doesn't go very far, but it, it will. And of course, it has enough power. A modulator like that has enough power to drive an amplifier, and it technically could be used as a television modulator. And, a, and I'm sure many of those were used as a television modulator, at least for cable head ends. Most analog TV stations had a separate uh, audio transmitter and a video transmitter so they actually had two separate transmitters you wouldn't have a combined unit with an audio subcarrier and have it hit a high a high power transmitter for broadcast but for cable head ends that's all they needed they needed enough power to to go through all their mixers and and go through all of their uh, all of their uh, filtering right so the output of those professional or commercial grade modulators the output is adjustable so that you can, once you've gone through all of your splitters to combine all your signals together, you can put the output onto a spectrum analyzer and then you can adjust each of the levels so that all of your levels are the same and then feed that into your cable system. That's how the cable guys did it in the days of, uh, of analog cable. These things here are strictly for consumer use and you would just basically dial them up to a channel that wasn't being used and then you could inject the signal and you know use it to inject your security camera into your cable system and that's what most of these were used for and uh, I used to use these I have three of these ones and uh, one of these is actually being used to put that time on the TV another one just identical to this set to channel 40 I used to use these with um, those little off-air cable uh, boxes that would pick up the local stations and I had all the local stations that were on digital onto my house cable. That was from back in the days when I didn't have many TVs that had digital tuners. Most of the TVs I had uh, only had analog tuners in them. They were just standard definition sets. So I used to receive the signals off air in digital, convert them all down with a, one of those cable converters or the, the off air converters, and it would hit one of these modulators and then it would the, the, uh, the local channels went out on uh, UHF. But, as I say, I've retired the UHF ones because these will interfere with the off-air signals because they're in the same type of spectrum. And uh, I put everything now on low band and the low band just looks better. Um, you don't need as much power and everything looks a lot better. But, that's what these are. And say, I, I, got, I got a few of these up for sale right now just trying to get rid of them for someone who might be interested in one. 
uh, they're not that expensive. I'm just gonna try and get rid of these things uh, as I, I've got a surplus of electronics that I no longer need. Anyway, and by now you're probably wondering what channels do I get when I combine my off-air channels with my in-house channels. Well, here we go. This is channel 2.1, which is CBC. The next one up is channel 4, which is from one of my internally, that's my cable box. It's on the channel 4 stereo modulator. Channel 5, which is analog, again, my bad weather channel. Uh, channel 7 is my main uh, PVR. Channel 8.1, this is a global TV off-air live. 9 is my security cameras. 10.1 is um, at City TV, CKVU. 12 is my uh, media player with my, my concerts on it. 12.1 is Me TV. 12.2 is the Movies Channel, which is off air. 12.3 is HDI, which is uh, Heroes and Icons. We go to 17.1, this is CTV2. 22.2, that's another global channel, and it's just a simulcast of the same thing that's on 8.1. Uh, 24 is a KBCB, 24.1 is um, the Jewelry Channel, 26.1 is CBC French Channel, 27 that's coming off the uh, other box which I've got tuned to global, 28.1 this is KB, K, KBTC which is a PBS station out of Seattle, uh, 28.2 is NHK World Service also in HD from Tokyo. 28.3 is the megahertz channel, whatever the heck that is. 28.4 is uh, TVW, which is uh, the uh, Washington legislature, I guess, or their, their whatever they, their equivalent of, we have our legislature channel, I guess it's their state uh, state government channel. And then 32.1 is uh, uh, CTV from Vancouver. 40, well, that's my time. And 42.1 is CH. NM, which is Omni TV, which is another HD channel, and then back to channel 2.1. So that's what I get with a digital TV on my network, on my, my home in-house cable system. I've got my analog channels that I generate locally, and I've got the digital channels that I receive off-air. Pretty cool, huh? Thanks for watching. We'll catch you later.